The mountain pygmy possum is unique for a number of reasons. Most possums um, are arboreal and they live in trees, but this possum lives in boulder fields below the ground, mainly areas where there's um, snow cover. Um, and it's one of our only marsupials to hibernate for a prolonged period of time under a cover of snow. There are lots of threats to this animal right now. The numbers are incredibly low. Climate change is the big one. Climate change is directly you know, affecting these guys, affecting their insect food that they have, but also retreating snow lines up in the snowy mountains area where they live. Um, affects their hibernation time. The background for this breeding facility or breeding project is based on the fossil record. Um, so we're trying to use every bit of information that we have to help our understanding um, of this species. Um, we're not just restricting it to the modern, modern ecology. The first thing that struck us was many of the animals whose ancestors were in these rocks were living in environments that were rather different than their descendants today. Burmese, we knew Parvis, uh, was living in the Alpine, the cold Alpine area that has snow every winter. Well, that was obviously not the situation in which this ancestral form was living in. Rainforests were the, the, the engine, the generator of all the fascinating things that went on to populate Australia. And as Australia began to dry out from about 15 million years ago, some of those animals adapted well to the changing environments. But there were others that were so bonded to the rainforest and the wet environments that they followed the rainforest um, eastward as it retreated from the center of the continent and then suddenly was only around the peripheries of the continent. And we think the mountain pygmy possum traveled with them. The rainforest in the lowlands with those mountain pygmy possums slowly progressed up the mountains. Then climate change occurred again and the drying in the alpine area and the cooling meant they were faced with another kind of a crisis. They either went extinct or they found ways to adapt, and these animals did. Of course, now the problem that we've got is that we're going to be facing climate change yet again. We need to be able to breed them at a lower altitude to help them combat climate change and maybe have a population that breed at a thousand metres here at Secret Creek. We know the temperature variants here at um, a thousand metres are suitable for them. I'm absolutely in love with this species so I would be so incredibly sad if it was to go extinct. We'd be crazy before we write this possum off and say okay sorry first big casualty of climate change in Australia. Let's consider the possibility that they have within their genome the resilience to adapt if we shift them to their ancestral comfortable habitat. If we do this and it works, this is just step one. Um, there are people around the world who are looking at uh, Pleistocene distributions. You know, were a particular animal, endangered animal, more widespread, say, a million years ago? Pandas, for example, today are only found in montane areas. They used to be all in the lowlands. In understanding that, it provides an opportunity to think about similar projects. And therefore, we use the mountain pygmy possum as a kind of a proxy for how we might save other endangered animals found in similar habitat.